In hindsight, that probably wasn't the best idea. I think I've put off blood magic long enough, so let's go ahead and just dive right in. But this time we deal with blood magic, we're going to be getting into blood sacrificing. So we're going to need the blood altar, and we're going to need a way to harvest that blood by way of self-sacrifice. So let's go ahead and make sacrificial dagger. And you remember a while back we made a hellfire forge. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and place this, say, you like just right here for now. Just toss some gunpowder, coal, redstone, and some sort of white dye in there, and we get arcane ashes. This will come in use for when we want to make our sigils. So obviously first we're going to need to set down our blood altar, and then just go ahead and start sacrificing some blood. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and put some stone in there. We got ourselves our first blank slate. So I believe what we can do is we can just go ahead and right click this, these arcane ashes on the ground. And if we put some redstone in it, as well as our blank slate. Wow, that is, that's pretty neat. And we get our divination sigil. What the divination sigil will do is it allows you to kind of monitor how much life essence that we have in our network and in our altar. So if we right click in the air, we'll see we have the LP in our, um, I guess you could call it your network. But then when we right click the altar, um, we can see the essence that's in the altar itself. So I think what we want to work towards next is getting a tier two altar, which will allow us to craft different types of things. The main thing that I think I'm going to be focused on today is just getting some basic sigils made. So we got to make sure we keep an eye on the will in our Tartaric gym. So having said that, let's go ahead and put some redstone, a block of coal, some cobble, and some lava in there. See, we drained, I think it was 10 will that it drained. Yeah, it drained 10 will and we get a lava reagent. Make one more blank slate. Got to make sure you can keep this thing going. So one blank slate requires 1000 LP. See it finished. Awesome. Also, the cool thing about the arcane ashes is they have 19 uses, it looks like. So if you go ahead and set that down, right click our lava reagent in it, and then right click our blank slate. We have a lava sigil. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think that that would actually work, but I forgot that in Blood Magic, if you try to use a sigil and you don't have any LP in your network, it will use that sigil, but it will require some blood, which is your health. <laughs> so obviously we can't use this lava sigil effectively right now. We need to get a blood orb. And the first tier blood orb is the weak blood orb which is going to require about 2,000 LP. But yeah, if we go ahead and put a diamond in there with 2,000 LP in our network, or in our altar itself. Nice! We have a weak blood orb. Um, I believe there are six tiers of blood orbs, all holding different amounts of LP, so what we can do now is, is if we right-click, it'll drain some health, and it will add some LP into our actual network. But we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be getting into self-sacrificing and investing a lot into the self-sacrificing aspect of blood magic. So we'll see our actual network is now filling up. The blood altar will fill up any blood orb you set into it. It's very slow, though. We can get upgrades to make this process faster eventually. So right now we have... 1,618 LP in our network. Now if we go ahead and use our Lava Sigil, you'll see it didn't hurt us this time, but wow, it drained 1,000 LP from our network. So yeah, LP powers, you could say, it, it powers your Blood Magic Sigils. So we now have a Sigil that will place the Lava Blocks for us.
We're going to need to upgrade our altar in order to make better sigils. The way we do this is with runes. And I'm going to need to craft up quite a bit of blank slates in order to upgrade my altar. I just went ahead and set up an Ender.io item conduit with some item filters in it, whitelisting all the things I need from this, and it will automatically extract the blank slates when they're done, and it will automatically input Smoothstone when it's ready to go in. So that's really cool. You know what it did? It inputs that whole entire seven smooth stone that I put into it. I didn't think it would actually input the whole stack, but either way, we, we got it done. So I'm gonna need eight blank runes. So if you go ahead and set these around our altar, like so, we'll see that in, in the little tooltip there, we now have a tier two altar. Okay, it looks like they hold the same amount of LP, but just know that it's a tier two and we can craft a lot more things with a tier two altar. We now have access to reinforced slates, which we can use to make some better sigils. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So before we get to crafting what I need, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade to the next tier blood orb, which will be the apprentice blood orb. We're gonna need a lot more food if we wanna keep this up. It looks like it sacrifices your Food saturation for health. That should be enough. There we go. <laughs> right as I say that. We have an apprentice blood orb. We can finally craft our incense altar. This will give us an LP boost when we use our sacrificial dagger. So for now, I'll just set this mm, right here. I guess it's fine. We'll see if we right click our incense altar with divination sigil, it says we get a 20% bonus. So you can see it kind of charged up the sacrificial dagger here. Now, if we go near our blood altar now, we can, well, first of all, we have, right now we've got about 3,300 LP in our network or in the altar. We hold right click and release kind of like a bow. You'll see it drained a bunch of our health, but we've got a whole lot of LP in our network now. In the altar now, gosh, I don't know why I keep saying network. It's just such a, <laughs> it's, it's a fun word to say. That's, that's why I say it. But we can kind of upgrade the bonus of the incense altar. So with the apprentice blood orb and some planks, we can craft some wooden paths. I think 36 is exactly the amount I need. So you'll see now if we set up some wooden paths like this, make sure they're on the same level and branching out just like I have. Now we'll see we have a 28% bonus and tranquility of 122. So I'm gonna go ahead and set all these down here. Now I've got a 45% bonus. So it kind of applies a bonus to how much blood you sacrifice in your altar, but even this can be upgraded even more. Now, there are many things that you can use to boost the tranquility of your altar. Say if we go ahead and add a water block here. See it got boosted to 450 tranquility with a bonus of 50%. Looks like Netherrack itself boosted the tranquility. Um, I think if you catch it on fire, yeah, <laughs> the actual fire boosts it a little bit. So, you know, obviously we don't want fire near the trees here, so it's got to make sure that's a little bit away from everything. So I'm just going to start adding some water and this and that all over the place and see what kind of tranquility numbers we can get. I'm not really worried about getting the best of everything right now.
So after going back and forth a bunch of times and testing what combination of what increases my tranquility by however much, decided that this is probably about the best I'm going to get for now. I think it seems like 60% is about the max bonus that I can get with these um, wooden paths. So I'm going to leave it at this. We've just got some like netherrack and some potatoes and carrots and wheat and uh, we even got some nether wart over here. Some logs and some um, oak leaves. We've got 5,542 in here now. Now we've got 8,422. Wow. That was almost about 3,000, wasn't it? I am going to make an air sigil. That should be fun. So at the cost of two feathers, a gas tier, and about 20 will, I believe it is, we will get an air reagent. So again, we're going to have to use our arcane ash. Right-click our reagent in there. And then right-click our reinforce slate. And we've got an air sigil. So let's see how much LP this uses per use. Okay, uh, looks like it uses about 50 LP per use. Let's take a short intermission in the video to go murder some ghast, why don't we? That sounds like fun. Wow, four ghast tears. Also, if you didn't know, I made a stone cleaver. Kind of off camera. Whoa. Also, a great way for avoiding danger. But yeah, as I was saying, I'm um, kind of off camera. I went ahead and made a stone cleaver and put like a bunch of lapis on it. So now we have a luck three cleaver. You see, it killed that gas in two shots. We got four gas tears from it, so that's pretty awesome. I feel like a ninja with this thing. Oh no, there's a dead end. Just kidding. This also works really great in combination with the slime boots because you go up too far, when you land, you just bounce. Or maybe if you run out of LP in midair and you're like, oh shoot. Nope, slime boots are there to save you. I may regret this decision. Ah, that was pretty cool. I didn't get the gas tears though. Oh well. Looks like Tinker's Construct still got a few bugs it needs to <laughs> needs to get figured out there. That's um, that is way too many magma slimes. Don't do what I did. Watch your health closely. Also, watch your hunger bar. <laughs> so, I'm kind of blowing through my food at the moment because of the huge amounts of food saturation that blood sacrificing costs. So, I'm looking into crafting a sigil of the green grove. So, with two saplings, sugar cane, and a piece of sugar, and about. 20 will, we get a growth reagent. Let's go ahead and make a little arcane circle on the ground here. Right click our growth reagents into it. Right click our reinforced slate there. Now we have a sigil of the green grove. Oh, well, wow. it actually makes a little growth sound now. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So any crop we walk near, it will apply a growth tick to it, but it's, 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 it's a little different than it used to be. Um, the Sigil of the Green Grove can actually just be used for a straight up bone meal. 
of course, at the cost of some um, LP. And I still haven't found any food in the game that compares to the amount of saturation that spaghetti gives, so I've just been making spaghetti. Before we go ahead and upgrade our blood altar, once again, I think I'm actually going to upgrade the runes I have here themselves to a type of rune that will give us a lot more LP every time we sacrifice some health. So I went ahead and made eight reinforced slates, and I pulled up my blank runes so that I can make the runes of self-sacrifice. And these are going to boost how much LP we get in our altar every time we use our sacrificial dagger now. So right now we've got 4,461. See how much we get now. Oh wow, that's actually quite a bit. Really awesome, I'm, I'm happy with that. So one thing I didn't even realize is Blood Magic has kind of an ore doubling mechanic now. We go ahead and set this alchemy table down. Wow, this thing is really derpy. Um, there we go, that, <laughs> that's, that's how I want it. So what we can do is if we Make some water bottles. Two wheat, plus bone meal in here, and I think it requires an orb. Look at that, it's, it's making something, but what is it making? We got plant oil, so if we put some plant oil, water bottle, redstone, gunpowder, coal powder, and sugar in here. Slowly but surely. we get basic cutting fluid. And you can see here it has 16 uses. So if we put some cutting fluid in here, as well as a, like a, some iron ore, it used up some of the cutting fluid, but it gives us some iron sand. And then when you smelt that iron sand, would you guess it? We get iron. So awesome. I did not, I had no clue that Blood magic had ore doubling now, so it's very, very cool. You can actually do a lot of stuff with this alchemy table. Now, it's easy enough to kill creepers, but sometimes you're just struggling for gunpowder. Get some sulfur, and then combine two plant oil with two coal powder, or one coal powder, rather. We're going to get some saltpeter. But if we combine the saltpeter, sulfur, and some charcoal together, I actually did not get enough charcoal. That sucks. We get gunpowder. Three gunpowder. That's, that's not a bad trade-off. Remember, we were using gunpowder for our Deep Resonance Crystal creation, and I actually ran out of gunpowder. So that's going to be really nice. And oh my gosh, this little spot of podzol right here is getting on my nerves. Just taking a quick second here to mention that I set back my Deep Resonance stuff. And this time I'm using an Actually Editions ESD rather than a hopper, since for one, it transfers items much quicker, and two, it's a lot more configurable. I've got some laser relays going into my deep resonance machines. And I went ahead and reset all my item laser relays with some item filters, because the item laser relay system kind of works a little bit differently now. So all that is up and running.
I figured I should change things up a little bit down here. So I made an ESD to transfer items from my input chest to my network. And then I made an item phantom face and link that to my input chest. So now everything that gets output from my alloy smelter now gets sort of wirelessly transported into my input chest. And all this is because I'm moving my elevator over a few blocks to properly center it. And then I just quickly set up some laser relays putting power into my machines up here. Oh my god, it brought the whole floor down with it. And I moved my teleportation stuff as well, so... Now everything looks a lot more fancy down here. The elevator is centered. Deep resonance stuff has moved back a little bit more. We've got laser relays going for power. I think it looks a lot more compact and we have a lot more room now. And just for the heck of it, why not start creating a new crystal? And then now with our crystal creation, now that I've got a few gas tiers to spare, why not um, just boost our stuff while we can? It's probably not going to boost it a lot, but it's worth it's. It's, it's worth it, I think. And then the rest, I'm just going to throw some gunpowder in there. So we know one way that we can get some gunpowder. But another way that we can get some gunpowder is with the alchemy catalyst. What you can do is you just throw it right under... Well, you don't throw it, but you <laughs> place it right under your mana pool. And now, we have the ability to convert things. So this flint is being converted into gunpowder, and we can even convert gas tears into enderpearls. That's cool. It used to be, I think, four enderpearls for one gas tier, and that may be a bug, but... Yeah, just so you know, you can do it. That's just a little bit satisfying. Our second crystal is ready! I think I'm going to be a little bit smarter about things this time and make a radiation suit. That is, uh, that's something else right there. Alright, the crystal is finished. Let's go ahead and set it down. So it looks like um, the RF per tick is a little less, but it definitely holds a lot more than our crystal before. Our, our other crystal it has about 51% strength, but this crystal has about 67% strength. Now it looks like our, um, our generators uh, are looking for power, so I'm gonna have to set this down. Look at that, it's draining from both of the crystals. Actually gonna turn this on manually real quick just to just to watch it go. So this this thing's pulling in fourteen thousand RF per tick right now. Oh oh okay, I was wasting power there for a second, but yeah, we got two crystals. Nice. I do not quite have enough resonating ore yet. To make another crystal, but once I do get more, you you bet we're gonna be making more crystals. You can never have enough RF generation. At least that's my thinking. That is it for today though. Next time we come back, I'm gonna be getting into a brand new mod that actually just came out today that I've been so hyped for. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet. I'm gonna leave you guessing, but I'm sure we'll find some way to squeeze some more blood magic in there as well, but anyways, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day, and see you in the next video.